and welcome to our first keynote, the comfortable, intelligent, and holographic services for wireless communication. Well, I would recommend you to participate. Any questions and comments are more than welcome. You can type them on the right-hand side in the WOVA platform. And we even have a prize for the best question asked. So take a couple of moments to think about what you would like to know about wireless communications before we start. And we have here to report the latest research advances on modeling, analyzing, and optimizing RESs for wireless communication with a focus on electromagnetically consistent models, analytical frameworks, and optimization algorithms. Marco Di Renzo. Marco, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for the, the kind invitation and for having uh, me um, in this um, in this event. So I, uh, I'm very happy, I mean, to introduce to you my research work on... Um, Thank you for being here. Uh, thanks. On uh, reconfigurable intelligent holographic surfaces. So my idea is to give you an um, uh, overview of these emerging technologies and uh, uh, what is happening in the wireless community. Um, in order to uh, try to standardize this technology in future telecommunication standards. Um, so, the, um, uh, so the outline is the following. Uh, as I said, I will give you a brief introduction and then I will go through the standardization uh, activities currently ongoing and then time permitting, I will go through uh, some um, 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 analysis of what the gains of this technology might be if we deploy them, uh, if we deploy this technology in a network today, but also some challenges that needs to be solved in order to uh, leverage the opportunities of these technologies. So the, the first point that I would like to um, address is what is a meta surface uh, for the people who are not necessarily familiar with this, uh, this technology. So the uh, So the, the general definition of a meta surface is that of an engineered material, uh, which is uh, um, bidimensional. So engineered material, what does it mean? It means that it's a material that with properties that do not exist in practice in, 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 in nature, and therefore we build it. Um, so it is usually made of two elements. Uh, one is, uh, is shown in red here that are sort of tiny antenna elements, and another one are the electronic circuits that allows us to control the response over time of this device. And then we interconnect it with the with the network, and therefore in wireless communications we are interested in uh, how this device works, but also how to interconnect it with the network. And this uh, is a major problem to solve. Um, so in wireless we can use this technology for three uh, major applications. Uh, so the first one um, is a, a relay type surface and. Um, here we would like to uh, use this technology uh, with some specific properties. So, and the main property is that the surface is uh, um, uh, nearly passive. So we deploy these surfaces in the environment and we want to control the electromagnetic waves. Um, we don't want to use a power amplifier, so we don't want to use a, a complex signal processing operations, but we do everything in the electromagnetic domain. So this is an example that shows you that uh, when this transmitter uh, uh, emits some signals, um, the same signal can reach the receiver through multiple paths. And um, this surface, what they do, they make sure that all the paths, uh, whatever the user location is, they are well aligned such that we can get a good signal. Another application which is quite relevant, especially for the emerging wireless systems, which will be utilized sub terrors or terrors frequencies, is to be able to reach users that, for example, are no line of sight, for example, just behind walls. We could create some reflections that we can completely control and always steer the signals where the, these users are. And this is a, a quite quite in, important, I mean, for emerging uh, frequencies. And um, the third one is the possibility of uh, using this technology, even though there is a good um, signal that you get directly from your transmitter, you may use this reflection to boost even more your signal, but even to uh, try to uh, transmit multiple data streams at the same uh, at the same time. So this is a, 
less explored uh, with respect to the others. So then there is another possible um, application, which is using these surfaces as transmitters. So now here the requirements are relatively different, uh, which means that um, um, uh, okay. So essentially now these surfaces, they do have uh, active uh, elements, active components, and we don't want to use them to steer the, to, 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 um, to change the uh, propagation environments, how the waves propagate throughout the environment, but rather we want to uh, replace some um, transmitters and utilize them for transmitting to other surfaces, which can be, for example, a tablet. Uh, you can put this technology just on the back of this uh, tablet. So now, what are the benefits of this of this technology? Um, the benefits uh, can be um, many, especially in um, in uh, emerging wireless systems. So, forget the, the mathematics, but uh, if you have two large surfaces communicating with each other, um, typically, um, if you are uh, if these surfaces are not sufficiently large, and if the distance is too long, uh, and if you operate in line of sight, which means that um, the environment, you can only see the path between the transmitter and the receiver, usually you can transmit only one symbol and therefore you don't achieve a very high data rate. But if these surfaces are very large and then uh, um, and also the distance is not too, 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 too long, you can perceive the spherical wavefront of these waves and you can get, you can transmit multiple data streams. So the larger these surfaces are, the shorter the distance or the smaller the wavelength, so the higher the frequency, the more the data that you, can that you can transmit. And this enables, for example, the transmission at very high frequencies of uh, um, the application is like holographic communications that allows you to, to really transmit at very high uh, the data rate that you need. And um, the, um, the main benefit of this application is that while in the past, in order to get the same benefits, you were supposed to optimize the location of the base station, which is difficult to do, or to utilize very many antennas with very many power amplifiers and uh, uh, a complex RF uh, structure, now the benefit is to be able to get the same gains, but with a relatively a few number of, um, a small number of um, uh, power amplifiers, the transmitter and the receiver, while you can process all the rest in the uh, electromagnetic domain. So this enables you to simplify quite significantly the, uh, tech, the complexity. So a third application uh, is, um, um, is to uh, utilize this surface as an information surface. So what you want to do is to realize very simple transmitters um, and that allows you to transmit multiple streams without again using many power amplifiers. So imagine that um, now you have this device you illuminate this device with a wave, which is very, very close to the surface in this case, it's not far away from, from it. And um, if you want to transmit a symbol as one, you can encode the symbol into the pattern of uh, sub elements that is switched on, uh, which in this case is these four elements. But uh, if you want to transmit another, uh, if you want to transmit another symbol, if you want to transmit another symbol, then you may switch on these other uh, elements. And therefore, I mean, this enables you to um, encode the information into this pattern at a very low complexity. That's essentially the main, the, the main idea. Now, it's also interesting to note that uh, using these devices to modulate the data besides uh, controlling the waves turns out to be uh, the, op the optimal solution using it only for modulation or using uh, this device only for controlling the waves is inherently suboptimal. And this was proved and, and therefore, I mean, it's uh, people now are looking into these opportunities. Now, um, now in practice, this device works, uh, um, looks like this. So this is a, a, an example that actually uh, with the 1000 elements that you can control uh, simultan uh, simultaneously and uh, independently. And, um, and if you want to see how it works, uh, you can actually have a look at this, uh, at this website. The initial prototype was, was developed by my group jointly with, with a colleague, and this is a much more advanced uh, prototype. 
So now, um, the, the point is whether we will be able to ever see this technology in any communication standards. So the, the answer is, uh, is not clear yet, but uh, there are some activities um, within the, the European Telecommunication Standard Institutes and 3GPP. So within the ETSI, there is a, a what is called ISG or Industry Specification Group, uh, which started the activities um, um, the, um, September uh, 2021. And the idea uh, was to put together companies, universities and research centers and uh, try to understand what we can do with this technology uh, towards the possible uh, integration of it into communication standards. And um, <clears throat> so there are quite a few companies involved and in universities. Uh, there are three main work items. Uh, I'm in charge of the work item on communication model channels and evaluation methodology. And the first um, output, uh, which is a deliverable uh, of the first work item will be um, available soon, uh, the same as the third one. So it's under approval by, by ETS, but is, uh, is, it, is, it, uh, is it complete? Yeah. So now uh, we have been working for uh, more than one year. The, the, the first step is going to be the first two years uh, are focused on the exploration. So try to understand what we really can do with this technology and what gap we can fill in wireless communications. In parallel, there was also an ISG on Terra RC that was established in December this year in order to exp uh, explore the um, uh, high frequency bands. And, um, and hopefully, I mean, there will be another two steps in order to um, uh, specify this, uh, this technology and the characteristics to be, to be, to be uh, of, the, of the technology. So uh, within the 3GPP on the other end, the situation is less clear. Uh, the technology was actually proposed in uh, uh, June uh, 2021, but at that time, as you can imagine, uh, it was considered to be uh, not mature enough for consideration. So uh, what it was done, it was actually um, a step, the people stepped down in, in, in that step down. I mean, they considered to, uh, to, to go one step back and uh, in December 2021, and uh, um, rather than considering this technology, which allows you to completely control the electromagnetic waves, to go to a technology with uh, um, not so advanced capabilities in controlling the electromagnetic waves, and also using power amplifiers, which is called the network repeaters. Now this technology is under discussion for being integrated into the upcoming release of the, uh, of the standard. And um, indeed, I mean, uh, there is now this proposal, uh, there is a report with, which describes it uh, and uh, uh, full integration into release uh, 18. Uh, but the idea of both technologies, which is called the network controlled repeaters or smart repeaters and RIS, uh, which may be discussed next, uh, is really to reduce the cost, the deployment cost of uh, uh, cellular networks, for, uh, for example, because the technology is, uh, uh, can be uh, can be built with, with very low complexity. So now, um, assuming that this technology can be deployed into an actual network, so the, the question is what kind of gains we could, uh, we could get. Uh, and uh, we tried to study that. And um, the reason why the question is, not, is, uh, is sound and is not uh, easy is because uh, um, this technology is uh, uh, provide, uh, I received the power, uh, which is denoted here by SNR, which scales differently with respect to other technologies that uh, have been considered in the past. On the one hand, the more elements that you add, the more uh, the, the stronger the signal that you receive is going to be. But at the same time, since you have uh, uh, the transmission from the, tra the, the signals goes through the transmitter to the surface and from the surface to the receiver, you, uh, the received power scales with the product of the distances rather than with only one distance. So it's not really clear whether in an actual network you can get a, a large, large gain or in stated differently, how big the surfaces can needs to be or uh, what kind of distances we can, we can uh, uh, reach. So the, we tried to study this in collaboration with, uh, um, with some industrial collaborators. Uh, they um, have an advanced uh, proprietary simulator where they integrated this technology. And we tried to study what happens when we deploy it in a uh, network where we um, uh, have 5G base stations under realistic conditions. 
So for information, as of today, in this uh, city where the uh, si simulations were done, uh, you can get these rates, which are not enough for typical applications. Um, but if you ask the question, uh, like, uh, if I deploy these surfaces, would I be able to get 10 dB SNR? Well, if you can do that uh, without increasing the complexity, the deployment complexity, you may get a rate which is 3.4 bits per second per hertz. And this uh, uh, changes completely the, the story because you can see a huge, a huge boost. So now the simulations shows that indeed you can achieve this kind of, um, this kind of performance. And um, yeah. So uh, yeah, let me show you this, this to you. So basically here, this is the received power versus the number of uh, RIS uh, surfaces that you deploy. And you can see that without an RIS, you can get minus 10 dB SNR, which is not uh, sufficient for you to communicate. But as, as you keep increasing the number of surfaces, you can see a steep increase of the quality of the signal received until you reach this uh, 10 dB that is your, uh, that is your target. So, and you can do that without uh, um, adding power amplifiers, without uh, adding base stations uh, in a relatively uh, simple manner and also without using much, much power consumption. And, um, and you can do that with a size of, of, of this surface, which is of the order of uh, 70 centimeters times 70 centimeters and the gain is pretty uh, significant. So there is a kind of validation of the uh, opportunities that this technology uh, offers to, to us. So, but uh, I mean, these are the, uh, let's say the good side of the story. So we can get a gain provided that we deploy, we deploy these surfaces appropriately and with a sufficient uh, number, uh, uh, but there are some challenges. So the challenges uh, um, can be uh, stated um, as follows. Um, the, the key point is that we would like to control the, um, the waves uh, in a way that we can do whatever we want with the waves that are in the, in the, in the the environment without creating new waves, but just controlling better the waves that exist. But the point is that we want to do that without using power amplifiers, DSP, or radio frequency chains. So <clears throat> the, um, the, the main challenge is that in order for this surface to work, we need to estimate the channels between transmitter, RIS, RIS, and receiver. And it's challenging to do so uh, without using power amplifiers or RF chains, because we cannot send the pilots uh, signals from the RIS to the transmitter or to the receiver. And also, uh, we cannot even uh, decode the pilots at the, at the RIS because we don't have the digital signal processing capabilities. So the best that you can do is only to estimate the end-to-end uh, -end channel. Uh, but this takes time uh, because you have very many elements here that needs to be um, uh, estimated. So to give you <clears throat> an idea of what the issues uh, are, let me show you this uh, simple example where I compare three uh, different uh, schemes uh, for channel estimation. Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, there are three different schemes that we can consider. So the first one is uh, the case which can be considered the best uh, regardless of the um, overhead as we will see where every time that the channel changes, you try to optimize your transmitter and you try to optimize your RIS. So you need to do channel estimation for both of them. The second one, when you say, I only optimize the base station based on instantaneous CSI, and that's what uh, uh, a system, uh, a wireless system actually does. And you optimize an RIS only based on long-term statistics, which can be the location of the users. So if the users moves, then you can update the, um, the configuration, otherwise you don't do that. And then there is a worst case scenario where everything is uh, optimized based on the uh, locations of the users, for example. Well, you can see that under ideal situation, this is the uh, throughput that you can get in, 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 um, in red. This is the ideal case where you don't take into account the overhead for uh, acquiring the information that you need to make the uh, device work. 
if you consider the best case in terms of quality of the optimization, you get this green line, and you can see that as the number of elements increases, uh, you get uh, a very poor performance to an extent that there is no gain at all. Okay. On the other end, if you use the solution, which is shown in blue, you can get a good trend. Of course, not as good as the ideal case, but it, the scaling is very, very good. So, I mean, this is an example that shows you, uh, okay, we can get gains, but we need to make sure that the, uh, the uh, device is appropriately configured. And if you remember the first figure that I showed you, where besides the surface, we, there was a connection between the surface and the... Um, and the network, it's very important that this uh, uh, connection, uh, is uh, this interface is well established, it works well, is efficient, such that we can send uh, good commands, uh, I mean, commands in a timely manner and being able to optimize the, uh, the performance of the entire network. So uh, this is definitely a challenge and uh, <clears throat> Not, I mean, there are uh, um, uh, uh, discussions uh, in an attempt of um, time. try to develop uh, uh, this technology in a way that you can directly take it and plug them into the network without, uh, 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 I mean, much uh, control from the, from the network. So these are called the plug and play um, devices or RIS. And, um, the key enabler for this, uh, to make this possible, is uh, to have uh, um, um, an enhanced version of the surface where besides the capability of uh, communication, so transmitting the signals uh, with, an appropriate, with appropriate characteristics, you can also sense the, uh, the power. So it's a surface which is hybrid because in principle it allows you to do communication and sensing at the same time. And this is another emerging field of research in wireless communications where you do integrated sensing and, um, and communication. So I don't have much time to enter into the, the details of this specific case, but I wanted to report it to you because it is receiving uh, attention. I mean, and the corresponding results are available uh, um, at Infocom 2022, uh, uh, where we uh, proposed this uh, solution. So um, now I don't have really have much time to go into the mathematics, etc. But one of the key points, because I have half an hour, but one of the key points of this technology is, uh, uh, I mean, to, 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 to be able to understand the performance of this technology, uh, the use cases in wireless networks, uh, the challenges to solve is to make sure that we model the device uh, appro appropriately. And, um, and therefore, there is the need that the communities of uh, antennas, uh, metamaterials, and uh, wireless communication signal processing, they, they talk together because the models that are now utilized for these surfaces are very simple compared to what they should be. So if you are interested in uh, these specific problems, uh, which is a bit technical, so I'm not going to go much into the details now, you can refer to this paper where we um, uh, elaborated I mean, the problem uh, in very much detail. And uh, I would like to conclude, I guess that this is the last slide that, that I have, uh, by... Um, uh, by uh, giving you a pointer so where you may be able to find more information on this technology and what you can do with it. Um, so this is a special issue that was published in September 2022 uh, in the proceedings of the IEEE uh, dedicated to this technology. Uh, you will find 14 papers going from the um, uh, materials, antennas, optimization, signal processing, channel estimation, uh, using this technology as mod for modulation, machine learning, etc. Therefore, it's a really comprehensive. Every single article is written in a tutorial style manner. So therefore, this might be a source to understand the problems, the technology, and also to get references. Um, and also, if you are interested in understanding what these meta materials could do for uh, future wireless networks, there is a, a, a an opening uh, article written by one of my collaborators uh, in industry uh, discussing uh, what this technology can do for 6G, 
and also easy integration with machine learning and what machine learning, the role that machine learning can play for uh, optimizing uh, networks uh, endowed with this uh, emerging technology. So that being said, um, I reach the end of my presentation. So once again, thank you very much for uh, inviting me and um, I'm happy to take any questions. I mean, if you have any, in any case, I mean, I'm available for discussions uh, 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 by email. So you can find here my, my uh, emails. And also I would like to acknowledge the support of uh, uh, quite a few uh, projects and especially the European Commission for supporting these research activities through uh, many uh, collaborative initiatives between uh, academia and, um, and industry. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Marco Di Renzo. So to everybody listening, what would you like to know about reconfigurable intelligent and holographic services? Please type your questions in the chat. Uh, Marco, uh, you mentioned about the, uh, the, the estimate about when this might be used, uh, about the, the start in 2021, uh, about it might be used in an upcoming uh, release. But what's your estimation? When will this technology be commonplace and used by everyone? Yeah, so when it will be used by everyone, it's, it's very difficult, I mean, to say at the moment. Uh, what I mean, I can say, uh, adding a little bit of information on what I mentioned I mean, before, is that um, at the moment there are uh, um, many companies that are supportive for, for this technology, that support this technology and would like to see it discussed in details uh, as soon as possible. So some other companies are still uh, um, uh, considering that um, we need to uh, wait a little bit uh, more because maybe the technology is not mature enough for uh, for being uh, in order to specify i mean all the details because if we don't understand completely um, the opportunities that this technology may give to us then uh, providing specifications may not allow us to uh, utilize this technology at uh, at best so um, the best expectations is that the uh, companies within 3GPP will be able to discuss the technology in the next uh, in the next release so when the current release will be um, discussed, I mean, and, and completed, um, then they may start the discussion. So uh, it will take a few more, uh, a few more years. Um, for the use, I mean, of this, um, of this technology, I think that we may see it uh, um, in 6G networks. So usually, I mean, every generation of uh, communication networks takes 10 years from 6G to uh, to 6G, uh, so, I mean, from 2G, 3G, 4G, uh, et cetera. So therefore, I mean, if we set as a 5G 2020, you will see that maybe we will need quite a few years to really see uh, this technology, to possibly see this technology into the actual, uh, into the actual market and to into actual networks. The interesting point is that the, the, there is a lot of interest uh, and what was done starting from June 2021, which was when this uh, the technology was not, I mean, very very mature. I have to say, I started working um, at, the, at the at the very beginning when this technology was proposed. Uh, what we did in the last three years, I mean, from June 2021 up to now, um, uh, to the last two years is actually uh, pretty uh, significant. So I. I see that there is a lot of interest. So let's let's see. I mean, what is going to happen if the companies will find um, will find an agreement? But I mean, it, it's a few years. It's not something that we will see tomorrow. I mean, it will take a lot yeah. of uh, discussions. Yeah. But also not decades, if I'm hearing it correctly. Uh, no, 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 no. It's, it's not actually decades. Maybe it could be within the ten years or something like that. But for sure, I mean, if we will be integrated into, we will know it in the next few years, and then maybe it can be utilized in the next. Uh, um, uh, wireless uh, technology, uh, yeah, really, t I mean, generation, which is going to be the sixth generation, yeah. Excellent. So you talked about the advantages, of course. Uh, Emilia uh, is wondering in the chat, what are, what are the possible disadvantages one need to look out for across these technologies? Yeah, 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 this is a good, a good point. And this is actually the, um, one of the, um, so the, 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 the the main point of discussions that we are having. So, okay, there are benefits, but there are also uh, issues that needs to be solved. 
one of the issues that needs to be solved is, uh, as I showed you, how the um, uh, received power scales with the, um, uh, with the distance. Um, so it scales in a different manner, I mean, compared to the other, other technologies. And this uh, um, may limit the transmission range of this, of this uh, technology. Therefore, we may need to use it for um, short distances. Short distances might be like uh, inside a room, um, um, in, in an industrial setting, but also, I mean, outdoor is actually, is actually possible as we, um, as we saw. So um, we need to um, try to understand uh, um, this. Solutions in order to solve it uh, are, for example, to uh, deploy some um, uh, very, very low complexity power amplifiers uh, only for a few elements, which in any case provide a boost uh, while still keeping, I mean, the uh, power consumption and the complexity um, very low. So that's essentially one of the uh, challenges to be solved. Another challenge to be, to be solved is to interconnect the device with the, with the network. As we saw, it takes resources, mm -hmm. it takes time. So, I mean, while we can build a very advanced surface from the technological point, technology point of view, then, I mean, making sure that you can talk with the network uh, efficiently, it's, uh, it's not easy, it's not easy uh, at all. And that's the reason why we propose that these surfaces plug and play which in principle should ease the uh, deployment of these surfaces within the, the network. This is something that is very important and uh, one of the point, major points of discussion for this, um, to, 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 to integrate this technology into future telecommunication standards. Another one is a sort of technology bottleneck because uh, um, we would like to use this surface for very high frequencies. Um, I mentioned the terahertz, uh, sub terahertz. Um, the challenge, uh, there are many opportunities there, that's really one of the main uh, use cases, but um, there are challenges because um, we need to, technological challenges, because now we need to build a surface with very many elements and, and this needs to be tunable. And therefore making them tunable uh, at very high frequencies uh, can be challenging from the technological point of, uh, um, point of view. So these are... Um, a few of the thing, a few issues that basically people are trying to uh, research, uh, research as, uh, discuss, uh, especially within uh, telecommunication uh, standards. Then there are many other issues to solve from the academic point of view, but these are more on the uh, fundamentals. I mean, of this of this technology. So this can be a kind of short answer. Yeah. Okay, uh, Tijan Liu in the chat. Uh, thank you for the talk. So that's good. And he also mentioned there are some pro proposals of RAS with fully active elements to address the double path loss problem. Do you think such a setup is practical or would a hybrid RAS be a better choice? Yeah, and that's a very good point. Yeah, that's essentially what I was mentioning because one of the solution is to put some of these amplifiers, I mean, on the, on the surface. So Personally, uh, also I've been discussing with some, uh, with some companies, uh, um, one of the main beauties of this uh, technology is to be simple, not to use power amplifiers, not to, not to create new waves, but rather recycle the waves in an efficient manner. Also looking at decreasing the electromagnetic pollution and, um, and so on and so forth. So the low complexity and the um, ease of deployment are the key, the key features. As, the, 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 um, as was mentioned in this question, if we add the power amplifiers and we move this technology towards uh, um, a true relay, uh, the benefits that we may have uh, will, uh, will diminish. So we are not going to have uh, these this, this benefits. So um, I, um, I think that if this technology will find a place in future telecommunication standards uh, is uh, if we avoid as much as we can uh, these power amplifiers and this, and this complexity. We may try to use uh, a very, very, very few of them in order to compensate for the double path loss in order to ease the channel estimation problems that I mentioned. But otherwise, I mean, the technology will not look will not be different we will have the same problems as we had in the past with relays and therefore i mean it will not be effective so the the, the issue is really to try to make it work in as much passive as possible without using power amplifiers 
And what we understood is that uh, uh, the, we can compensate for that by making the surface larger and by um, simply uh, densifying the, 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 the number of surfaces that we can deploy through the, through the environment. And um, I mean, either we put power amplifiers and we use very few, or we just increase the number of surfaces and increase the, uh, and increase the size. So I, I think that therefore, I mean, the people are now looking at this passive, uh, passive case where you exploit the, the aperture. So this is one of the main discussions that we are having. At the moment, I mean, the, the door is, uh, is open. So within the standards that we are discussing, uh, all these solutions, yeah. I mean, are possible and with pros and cons. Yeah. Good. Uh, Emilia, thank you for your answer. Thanks for that. I have one more question. Um, later today, we'll have a keynote about long wave length. Uh, so instead of reflecting on surfaces, it would go completely through, through concrete, for example. Uh, what do you think about those possibilities? Yeah, this is a great, uh, um, this is a great, I mean, definitely, I mean, this is, this is um, of interest also for, for what I mean I mentioned, because today I mentioned that the, um, primarily the opportunity of using these surfaces uh, for reflecting signals because it's the most common uh, um, uh, application studied so far. But now mm -hmm. we are studying to already the next generation of this technology where we are not considering only surfaces that can reflect, but surfaces that can reflect, but also transmit the signals through them. So for example, you may enable communication between uh, um, outdoor and indoor, for example. And there are applications yeah. proposed by, by um, uh, some companies, I mean, to do that. So therefore having uh, a technology that allows us to go through the materials is definitely something of very much interest because uh, also this technology can do the same. For example, you can control the signal that goes through windows, the signal that goes through uh, materials and try also to, to control the room to room communications, outdoor to indoor communications or indoor to indoor communication. So it's definitely, I mean, uh, this metamaterial technology, is something that can be utilized also for the applications that you just, uh, that you just mentioned. Absolutely. Yes. And there are um, intense discussions, I mean, on that topic uh, right now. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So the combination would be even more interesting and helpful if I hear it correctly. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, we had two questions from participants and we have the best question award. So I'd like you to uh, name the best question. We had a question by uh, Emilia who uh, wondered about the disadvantage of this technology. And we had a question by Chi Yan Liu about the RAS with fully active elements or rather a hybrid solution. Uh, your pick, which was the best question asked? Uh, I, I, I would, I mean, it's difficult to choose between these two because they are both, I mean, very good, very good questions. So I'm not sure if I can uh, propose, I mean, both of them because they are actually related. Uh, so I guess that uh, if I can propose both of them, I can propose both. If I can pick one, I think that the one uh, related to the double path loss was uh, really, is really a very specific technical problem. So I guess that yep. maybe I will go, I mean, for, I will go for that. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, Chi Yan Liu, uh, you win a pass to one of their next upcoming conferences. Congratulations and thank you for participating. Um, Marco Diorenzo, I would like to thank you so much for your time uh, and your uh, knowledge about this topic and hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you so much.